Hello everyone, so today I want to analyse Bill Gates' dividend portfolio. He invests in 12 dividend stocks with yields ranging from 0.63% to 3.8%. How did Bill become so rich? Everybody knows he's wealthy, but this graphic from CNBC claims that Bill is the second richest man in the world behind only Amazon founder and large shareholder Jeff Bezos, who is worth over $100 billion. They put Bill's net worth at a staggering $97 billion, and most people know Bill made his fortune with his company Microsoft, which had huge amounts of success with Windows. But while we look at Microsoft's stock, it has stayed the same between the 3rd of January 2000 and 3rd of October 2016, it stayed the same at $58.71, even 16 years later, due to the dot-com bubble crash of the 2000s. But Bill made plenty of money during that time by reducing his shares in Microsoft and investing into companies like Canadian National Railway, of which Bill is the largest single shareholder for the company, holding just over 10% of their stock. And this holding makes up around 6% of Bill's total investment portfolio. They, the company operate 20,000 route miles that connect the Gulf of Mexico, the Pacific and the Atlantic. And this allows the company to handle over $250 billion worth of goods each and every year. They are Canada's largest railway in both terms of revenue and physical size. They also have they also a very durable business, meaning that they have assets that are extremely hard to replicate. And so there's only so many 20,000 mile railways that can be built. They have a fantastic network that connects almost 75% of the North American population and small companies generally cannot afford the outlay to maintain it or to even start it in the first place. There's a, very, there's a largely consolidated industry as well with the three largest railway operators only more than 60% of the rail miles in the United States. It has a very strong dividend as well um, at 1.7% yield. It's not a high yield, but it's a very strong dividend. And since going public in the year 1995, the company has compounded their dividend by about 15% annual growth, which is fantastic. And the management at the company have recently increased their payout target, which would suggest that double, div double digit dividend growth is likely to continue in the future. So the next stock I wanna have a look at in Bill's portfolio is Caterpillar. And Caterpillar makes up 6.7% of Gates total portfolio. They are the world's largest construction equipment manufacturer. They make fully completed machinery. They also create diesel, gas engines and turbines and locomotives. They are a very well-known company. 85% um, of their income comes from construction, energy and the transport industries. They generate a large amount of revenue from aftermarket parts and components also, but they will not put a figure on this amount. They are a very robust company. Again, this is a theme in Bill Gates' portfolio, and over 50% of their sales come from outside of North America, so they are definitely a global brand. They have an excellent reputation globally also, which helps them. They have a massive dealer network, which is a huge incentive for customers, as it's a great place to find specialised technicians to maintain and repair Caterpillar products quickly. They've also increased their market share for five consecutive years now. They also have a very reliable dividend, again, they have a 2.5% yield, so slightly better than CNI, and it's been paid every single quarter since 1933, which is an amazing record. The next company I want to look at is Coca-Cola FEMSA. Coca-Cola FEMSA serves over 380 million customers and operates in Latin America and Southeast Asia. They began operations in 1890 and the largest independent franchise Coca-Cola bottling company. They produce over 100 brands of beverages, including all the well-known ones such as Fanta, Oasis, Sprite, Lilt. Uh, sparkling beverages account for 80% of their sales and they have great economies of scale. They, lo they are located in rapidly developing countries, which is likely why it was appealing to Bill's investment portfolio, as they are likely to see better growth than Europe and North America. They also have a growing dividend. Uh, the dividend yield is 2.85%, which is great, and they have paid dividends for over 20 years. They have increased this dividend by around 19% year over year for the last decade, and they have a safe payout ratio of around 60%. The next one I'll talk about is Crown Castle International Corporation, which is a real estate investment trust. It is 2.3% of Gates' portfolio. Real estate investment trusts have different rules to normal stocks. The first one is that they must pay out 90% of their income in dividends to shareholders. They must have 75% of their assets invested in real estate. They must derive 75% of their income from rent or mortgage interest. They must own, be owned by 100 people or more and not be a financial institution. Crown Castle International is the largest provider of shared wireless infrastructure in the US and they have 60,000 miles of fibre and over 40,000 cell towers. 
They then lease these towers to wireless carriers such as AT&T and Verizon. They provide for all four of the big US carriers. They get 80% of their revenue is from recurring sources on 10 year leases and they have built in price escalators that add around 3% to annual growth every year. They also have a very low 2% normal renewal rate as there is no simple alternative. They also have a leading dividend in this portfolio that is the best 3.8% yield. They also have tripled their dividend since they started paying in 2014. They are targeting 8% annual long-term dividend growth, which I think is very doable. So the next one I want to look at is Ecolab. And Ecolab is a provider of water, hygiene and energy technologies and services to the food, energy, healthcare, industrial and hospitality markets. They sell sanitizers, cleaners, lubricants, cleaning systems, dispensers, water treatment products and on-site services. Over 90% of their revenue is from recurring sources and they are located in 170 countries around the world and more than 1 million customer locations. They have over 7,700 patents which protect their unique technologies and this allows them to sell their products at a 10 to 20% premium over their competitors. Their products do however offer a meaningful saving as they offer less waste and greater efficiency compared to competitors. They have over 50,000 employees and over half of these are customer facing roles. These customer facing roles allow them to make deals and these they visit customer locations every year to allow this allows them to sell their products and expand the business they do with current clients they also have a great dividend again of 1.16 percent which is nothing amazing again however they have paid this dividend for a consecutive 80 years which is amazing and they have increased this dividend every year since 1986 which is another great record they've also compounded this at 13.13 percent per year over the last decade so next is microsoft and so Microsoft software is still run on over 80% of the world's computers, despite people seeing Windows as a declining product. They also have grown 180% over the last five years, which is great. They have also, and this is subject to their diversification into Office 365, cloud services and Xbox. So Microsoft Azure, which is the, cloud, the company's cloud business, is revenue up 48% year over year. They have 13 game studios making content exclusively for Microsoft platforms. And this isn't the labelled gaming revenue to be up 8%. They also have promising developments in artificial intelligence. Microsoft have another comfortable dividend. And they have increased their dividend payout for approximately over 15% year over year over the past decade. And have a 1.8% dividend yield. They have great dividend coverage as well. Which is likely to see a good dividend growth. So the next company I want to talk about is Waste Management. Waste is an almost recession proof commodity as it is a must-have industry. They have more sites than the next two competitors combined and they have 26,000 vehicles in their fleet with 6,000 running off natural gas they have produced. They have 375 million potential customers in their area with 20 million currently signed on contracts. They are also a very hard to replicate industry. The assets that they have is there is limited space to dump rubbish and this leads to competitors using their space. So they also have a trailing P of 14.66 and a 1.61 debt to equity ratio, which is fine for a company with assets like this and long term contracts. So they are a bit of a dividend darling recently and have a yield of 1.9% and they have increased their dividend for the last 15 years. And they are a good dividend, which is completely safe due to great payout ratio and good cash flow. The next stock I want to talk about is United Postal Service or UPS for short. UPS represents 2.1% of Bill Gates portfolio. It is the world's largest package delivery company and they delivered around 5.1 billion packages and letters in 2017 and they were founded in 1907. They have revenue streams which are threefold. They have domestic which is over 60% of their revenue, international which represents 21% of their revenue and supply and freight which represents 16%. UPS should benefit from the rise of e-commerce even if Amazon successfully launches their own service. UPS are also another very resilient and dominant company. They have more than 100 cars, vans, tractors and motorcycles in their fleet. They also have another 237 jet aircraft that complete the UPS fleet. Um, to replicate this would take many years and would be extremely costly. The economies of scale that UPS have mean that they can deliver packages much cheaper than any startup could possibly afford to do so. So for the dependable dividend, they have a yield of 3.3%. They have paid an uninterrupted dividend for more than four decades, which is an unbelievable record. 
they have raised this dividend every single year since 2010 and the dividend has more than quadrupled since the year of 2000. Historically they have seen an increase of around 8-9% to over the last decade and a healthy 50% payout ratio means a safe dividend. So the next stock I want to talk about is the Walgreens Boots Alliance and this is 1% of Bill Gates total portfolio and they are a market leader, a global leader in retail pharmacy. They have more than 13,200 stores in 11 countries and they sell prescription and non-prescription drugs as well as consumer products. They have three business segments. The first is a US retail pharmacy which represents 70% of their income. The Alliance Boots which is in Europe which is 20% of their income and the pharmaceutical wholesale makes up the remaining 10%. They distribute drugs to over 200,000 pharmacies from over 350 distribution centres and they are well placed to, t to benefit from the rising life expectancy. They are another resilient company as they are the biggest purchaser of generic drugs and this allows them to purchase drugs at a much lower price and offer them at lower prices than smaller competitors are able to and they also have great real estate with 75% of US citizens living within 5 miles. They have a good dividend as well, it is a 2.36% yield. They have increased this dividend for more than 40 consecutive years, which is another unbelievable record, and have paid this uninterrupted dividend on their common stock for more than 80 years. And they have had a compounded dividend growth rate of 17.6% over the last decade. So the next stock is Walmart. Walmart does not need much of an introduction. It represents 4.2% of Gates' portfolio and is the largest brick and mortar retail store in the world. It serves more than 260 million customers every year. The three largest categories for Walmart are groceries, coming in at 56%. Then it is general merchandise, which represents 33%, and health and wellness at 11% of the business. They have 11,000 stores in 27 countries, and this means it generates 40% of its sales outside of the United States of America, mostly in Mexico and South America. They are another resilient, they have strength in size. They have more than 500 billion in revenue last year alone in 2018, and they, this means they can negotiate the best prices on many products. They also have great brand recognition, which drives Walmart, and their groceries are a must-have item, which makes them slightly recession-proof. They have a dividend yield of 2.02% and have increased this dividend for 40 consecutive years, which is another fantastic rev record. However, as earnings have slowed recently, so have the dividends, and I believe that is one of the reasons that Warren Buffett has exited his position in Walmart. The next company is FedEx. So this represents 2.8% of Gates' portfolio, and they began operations in 1973. They operate in more than 220 countries and territories, and they have four revenue sources. The first is the FedEx Express. FedEx Express represents 52% of their business. Um, FedEx Ground is 33%. FedEx Freight at 12% and FedEx Services at 3% of the business. This is another resilient business delivery company, but it's similar to UPS. They have a very efficient business model. They have a low cost of delivery because of high density. They have more than 47,000 vehicles in their fleet and it's just too much for a new competitor to replicate, same as UPS. They have another good dividend, which is a yield of only 1.1%, um, but they have increased this for more than 10 consecutive years and raised it by 25% in June 2017. And their payout ratio is near 10%, so there's loads of room for growth in that one. And the last stuff I want to talk about is Grupo Televisa, which is 1.2% of Gates' portfolio. This consists of a major Spanish-speaking media company, a Mexican cable TV operator, and um, a satellite TV Central American and Caribbean distribution. They have revenue from 38% comes from advertisements from content on both pay and free-to-air TV. They also have data, video and voice services, which makes up 30%, and Sky Central in America and Caribbean is 25% of their revenue, and they own a 50% stake in Sky. And Sky is a leading satellite TV provider with 8 million subscribers in the region. They also have a dividend, which is only 0.6%. They also is very volatile dividend, as the company is mostly focused on reinvesting for growth, and it's not a company that I would buy based on the dividend alone. Um, I believe that Bill holds this as a very fantastic future growth. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you've made it this far, that's fantastic. Uh, like it if you've got this far. 
if, please subscribe for the next video and make sure you check out my last video where I talked about three stocks that you need to be watching in March and also follow me on Twitter at StockInvestUK. Thank you.